ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. Thou Art That has um, posted a premature reply to my video attacking platonic forms. Um, and that, of course, was posted by Johan Ratz, but uh, Thou Art That has chimed in with a video titled Plato and Number, Math, Mathematics, and Eternal Forms. Now, he's, he's attacking my definition of math as being something necessarily derived from sensory perception. If you saw my video where I held up one pen and then another pen of virtually the same kind, these are different, but uh, and I said there's one and one and two, and you don't have to prove that, it's just obvious. He says, first he goes over a banal recap of Plato's idea of of reason, reason being a, 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 an exalted, higher form of thinking that takes a long time to to um, develop, and and uh, it's like a sixth sense developed uh, after much study and effort. He goes over this, and then he says, at one minute and forty-five seconds in his video, number and mathematics cannot be derived from sensory experience. This is what he says right after he recaps my. Mathematics being derived from sensory experience. He says they can't be derived from sensory experience. Math is a form of knowledge that has nothing to do with the empirical world. End quote. Now, that's pretty assertive because I just showed that math is based on the empirical world and it's based on facts that are obvious and can't be denied. That's why it's so reliable. Um, but he had better give an example for something like that, hadn't he? And he does. He follows with an example of a book and a cup. He holds up a book and a cup, and he says, here's two items, and uh, they are different. What do they have that's similar? Okay. I, you know, this occurred to me in my other video. I thought this is such a silly, uh, you know, thing to bring up, so I just leave, a, you know, a silly uh, tangent or whatever. You... you Numbers, that's, that's not a confusion of maths or numbers, and he's, he's, he's showing me why math isn't applicable to the empirical world. This is an example of, quote, why number and mathematics cannot be derived from sensory perception or sensory experience. Because you can hold a book and a cup up and there are two, and yet they're completely different, and now what the hell do we do? Well, here's the problem. You have to define your context. Nothing exists in a complete vacuum without any relations to anything at all. There's nothing like that. If it did exist in a complete vacuum with no relations to anything at all, no, we would never be able to get to it, would we? So everything exists in some context. You have to define the context that you're talking about. You cannot pick up two random items in the universe and say, look, two, there, numbers are disputed, refuted, math's no good anymore because I don't know why a book and a and a cup are similar. Well, I'll tell you why they were similar. Because they were both picked up and held in front of the screen at one time. Because they were both within your reach at one time. Because they were both on your desk at one time. Because they were both items that were purchased by you or owned by you or were in your home. Lots of things they have in similar, uh, in, in common. They are both subject to the law of gravity. Uh, they're both non-radioactive, hopefully. There's all kinds of things they have in common. So to say you've got two items, and but they're different, and then math is disproved, is just very typical of this young man. Um, I don't recall his name. Zero, thou art that zero. Um, and Red Light Rocket is another name he goes by. Oh, man. So you have to define your context. Now, if, if I say to my buddy, hey, hand me that board over there, uh, I need a board about three feet long to prop open this window. And my buddy says, well, let me get a tape measure. Uh, this looks like it's about three feet, but it might be an inch or two less or more. You know, I'm going to say, come on, you idiot, just hand me the board. It doesn't matter how long it is. If it's an inch shorter or longer, it doesn't matter. But if there's a heart surgeon and he needs to put a clamp on the heart or, or he's made, uh, this is an engineer designing the heart pump that's going to go into this guy's chest cavity, he says, Oh, we can put in a part of this size or that size. Doesn't matter if it's too big or too small. Doesn't really matter. He doesn't. He measures things within an inch variance for a heart pump. There's going to be a disaster. 
You have to name your context. You cannot show me a heart pump and all the parts very close and precise and working and then say, oh, we don't know what math is because not everything in the universe is so precise and exact like that. And you cannot hold up two different items and say, oh, now we don't know what math is because I can hold up two items that are seemingly a little bit different. Uh, this is very typical of his arguments. I, I, I maybe shouldn't have answered it, and I shouldn't possibly have taken so long on it as I have, but the point has to be made because he did bring up something that occurred to me that might fool some people, and it is just a really, really facile um, uh, observation. Uh, to s that, that doesn't disprove math at all. All that shows is that you have to choose in your mind, with your definitions and your purpose, you have to choose what you're talking about. It's probably going to be difficult for people like him and, and uh, Johann Rotz and stuff. You have to choose what you're talking about. You cannot say, I've got two, and then stop there. What do you have? You have two items in your hand, two examples of random things, two gravitational objects. You have two something. Define what it is you're talking about. But leave it to a someone like this to hold two things up and say, I'm confused. I don't know what math is. How ridiculous is that?